system and is willing to contribute money from provincial government to help end it. Makura was addressing scores of people at the state of the province address earlier. Our position has not changed on e tolls. It wasn't for elections, it wasn't for elections, the e tolls have no future in Gauteng. It wasn't for elections, they have no future in Gauteng. It was not for elections, it is something we believe in. Our position has not changed, but you know, you know the truth. This matter is in the hands of national government. One of the province's contentious issues, Makura is not backing down. He says the sixth administration will be prioritizing key areas in moving the province forward. Accordingly, this ANC-led sixth administration will focus on the following cluster of priorities. Firstly, we will pay significant attention to the economy. Secondly, we will pay particular attention to education, skills, and health. Thirdly, we will pay attention to the development of integrated human settlements and the release of land to many of our people who want to build decent houses for themselves. The fourth area of focus will be safety, social cohesion, and food security for vulnerable households. And lastly, we will pay particular attention to the building of a capable ethical and developmental state. But opposition parties are not convinced by Makura's speech, some labeling it as a mere talk shop. Well, you know, it was like we're listening to the state of the uh, planning address. What we heard here today is things that the Premier should have actually said in his cabinet in meeting first. So that when he comes here, he comes and gives us a clear plan. Akura's speeches are like this. We've been subjected to this year after year for the last five years. And so I'm not surprised that uh, he's promised us more plans. We have not received any feedback or reports. The Premier has said all the right things that we, we need to hear. The state of the province, the poverty, the crime, the shortages of housing, the slagging of the economy. Uh, but the disappointing part was that you must wait for 100 days to know how he's going to solve those problems. And he's been saying this for many, many years. Last year he said it and the year before that communities like the so-called coloured communities and the inner communities have been neglected. I want to see those plans come into reality. Makura has now given his MECs 100 days to outline their programs of action. Natasha Piri, SABC News, Johannesburg. And of course, Natasha Piri joins us now in the studio for more. So just looking at that State of the Province address, mm -hmm. Natasha, what would you say were his five key priority areas? Definitely, Tepisa. Um, as he, he alluded to, um, to in the package, he spoke about economy, jobs and infrastructure. That would that'd be the, the, a bigger pardon. That would be the first priority. Second priority would be education and uh, skills revolution, uh, then toppled by uh, the integration of um, human settlements. And the fourth one would be safety. Safety and the f fifth one is uh, building a capable and ethical and development state. So this is what the Premier actually, you know, outlined his speech um, upon. But he focused much on the economy, more specifically the township, uh, township economy, I beg your pardon, and SMMEs. Um, he also spoke about um, implementing or signing into law uh, something that he calls the Gauteng Township Development Act. And what this means for entrepreneurs in the township is that it be this act actually makes it much more easier for them to actually open or operate their own businesses. He also talk, talked about um, owners of SMMEs actually receiving their payments in 15 days time as opposed to the 30 day waiting period of which um, was welcomed um, by all and sundry that were actually um, at uh, the state of the province address. He also allocated or spoke about 60 billion rand um, and of course this is an infrastructure budget but this is actually channeled uh, to actually help uh, with job creation as you know that um, you know so many people especially young people are unemployed in South Africa I mean, our unemployment rates is probably at 27.6%. Uh, I said to be corrected upon mm, that. But this is, yeah. yes, so that is actually, um, you know, ways or, or projects or programs that are actually put in place to actually deal, uh, you know, with curbing um, the high unemployment rates that we actually have. He also spoke about the formalization of Zama Zamas, um, you know, that's illegal mining. And of course, you would know that an estimated about 14 billion rand um, actually, you know, is generated from the sector. So he said that he'd want to actually 
actually formalizes so that Gauteng actually could actually be booming, uh, you know, with business. Um, also talks about creating special economic zones amongst the various cities in Gauteng, your Twane, your Johannesburg, your Sidibeng, and Okuruleni, of which it already is. So lots of talks um, around the economy. Um, he's given also uh, the MEC of Economic Development about uh, 100 okay. days to actually get back. So let's talk about the ETOs, a big bugbear mm. for Gauteng as a province, uh, the province itself many a times promising that he'll get rid of it. What are the practical steps? What's next? Definitely, he he was resolute today yet again saying that um, there is no plans for e-tolls within Gauteng, but of course political parties, various political parties have been saying that, listen, this is a talk shop, you've heard it again. As to the practical measures or steps, he hasn't announced much. He had said that he's still engaging the transport minister, Figile Mbalula, on this matter, but had also said that I mean, this is something that actually rests with national government. He did, however, say that that he's willing to, you know, make contributions to actually de do away uh, with the debt mm. actually incurred uh, by the ETOL system. Did the Premier, or rather the opposition parties, expand on how they intend to use their vote to influence the Gauteng government to be held accountable? Because that's some of the reactions that we got. They felt that, as you say, some felt too much talk shop about certain issues where they felt there was not delivery. They did indeed. Uh, when speaking to Solim Simanga earlier on, he had said that, listen, motions of, you know, the scrapping of e-tolls will actually be passed, uh, you know, in legislature. And in that way, I think they will be holding, uh, you know, uh, Makura's team um, accountable. But honestly, some, or most uh, political parties that we actually got to speak to were not happy with, um, you know, the state of the province address. Um, some labeling it as a state of the planning address, that these are things that have been said. Um, we heard heard Mandi Samashekho say that, but he's been saying this over and over the five years, and there is no form of implementation. So they will be holding him, uh, you know, to account. Makura himself had said that in the next 100 days, he will be outlining a program of action, right. a plan. Natasha Piri, thank you very much. Just ABC reporter following up on that state of the province address. Let's take you now to Francis on a story we'll be doing more on later.